Well, I think a lot of us are still reeling from what happened last week. On Friday, the president telling us the country had survived an attempted insurrection. So, not just out of control looting, but as defined in the dictionary, a violent uprising against an authority or government. As we were wrapping our heads around that bombshell, the defense minister, Nosevira Mapisa Ngakula, muddied the waters on Sunday by saying that this was not a coup or insurgency, but rather a counter-revolution in the form of criminality or thuggery. So what did happen last week and why the mixed messages from our leaders? I'm joined now by independent political analyst Dr. Oscar van Heerden. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm just wondering why the defence minister would need to essentially contradict the president. I mean, apart from anything else, surely it's a bit of a career-limiting move. Yes, good evening, Sally, uh, and good evening to your viewers. Look, I mean, I think that uh, the characterization of the past week's events is quite important. It's critical that we get the semantics right, because if it is characterized correctly, then it means that the government and the powers that be, the law enforcement agencies, will appropriately respond to that particular uh, situation. And so I think that is perhaps where people are falling uh, over the semantics. But suffice to say, I think that uh, you rightly point out, you've given the definition of an, an insurrection. Um, if when, uh, I think the Minister of Defense deemed it important to dispel possibly the notion, particularly of a coup d'etat, because that ordinarily means it involves a military component, that there is some military dissent uh, and uh, usually when there is a coup d'etat attempt, uh, then it means the military is involved. And I think as Minister of Defense, she wanted to dispel that, that particular notion. To go as far as to say there is also not an insurrection, I find that curious. I mm -hmm. think that is incorrect. Um, and I think I have to agree with uh, the characterization by the Tabenbeke Foundation, where they talk of a counter-revolutionary insurgency that had taken place this past week. It's quite interesting, uh, just in the briefing that started at half past four this afternoon, the acting minister in the presidency, Kombutsa and Chabeni, made it patently clear that everyone believed that this was an attempted insurgency, insurrection rather, and that basically anyone who thought differently was wrong. So it was a bit of a smackdown and a clarifying that this is how the government feels. And I, I would imagine that the arrest of six suspects uh, lends credence to that. And I'm wondering why then the defence minister would want to either play it down uh, or change the narrative. I mean, is it because there would be a lot more for her in terms of her being part of the security cluster and being the defence minister uh, in acknowledging uh, that this was a massive attempt to destabilise our country? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I can't speak for the minister and her intentions, but I do think if we look at uh, the traditional, uh, not only definition, but the way these op these people operated within the, the last few days. Um, you know, people don't loot, for example, uh, water from water treatment plants. They don't loot uh, Boeing 747s from airports, uh, and so on and so forth. These are key installations, key points, which the National Defense Force deemed important to protect as the violence spun out of control. You don't loot necessarily and block roads like the N2 and the N3 because those are supply lines. These are clear telltale signs that there was a hidden hand, some coordination behind these lootings and criminality in order to try and destabilize the government, the authority of the state. And I think that message is very, very clear. And as the minister in the presidency, acting minister in the presidency says, it is generally accepted by many that that is the case. Why the minister of defense see it as important to try and downplay this phenomenon. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, Sally, the thing is that even us who've been uh, part of the anti-apartheid struggle in the 70s and 80s know the modus operandi. 
We used to burn tires. The police would come. We would engage with the police in, in violent uh, uh, attacks and protests. And then we would instrumentalize the poor, members of the community and students, youth, um, and, and actually stop trucks that, was, that were transporting goods and services, tell them to take all that is in the trucks because they are, they are in need of those, and then we would burn the trucks. Why were we doing all of this? Do because think... we wanted to undermine the authority yeah. of the PW uh, government, of the FW declared government. We wanted to show that they are not competent leaders. This is exactly the playbook that we saw last week. So I find it very strange that the Minister of Defence would want to say there was no counter-revolutionary you... insurgents that actually uh, participated in the, in the actions. Mm. Do you think, could the difference of viewpoint be informed by different political perspectives or different political allegiances even within the ANC? And, and I ask you that because a really interesting article by former head of the Defence Force, now Ambassador to Mozambique, Sepiu and Yanda, who we were supposed to speak to, but the line to Mozambique was just being ridiculous tonight. But he says here, renewal in South Africa and the ANC will remain elusive as long as the ANC fails to come to terms with the fact that much of the recent violence in the country arises from its own doing. And, and I'm just wondering, is, is what, if partly what we're seeing is fracturing, even at that high level, uh, it, could, could that inform that difference of opinion? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with the, the former general. Uh, we saw it even playing out with the run-up to the arrest of former President Zuma at Nkandla, where Minister Sisulu also tried to downplay and say, no, you know, no one's really violating any COVID-19 regulations. It's a few people. They're distancing and so on. And we knew at that stage that it was all factional talk. It was all people uh, actually taking factional sides. I don't know whether the Minister of Defence is necessarily part of the RET faction within the ANC. I find it curious that she would make those statements in Parliament. But I certainly agree that factional divisions within the ANC, within the ruling party, does have a role to play with these past events. Well, thank you so much uh, for chatting to us this evening and giving us uh, your insight. That was political analyst and uh, deputy vice chancellor at the University of Fort Hare, Dr. Oscar van Heerden, but speaking here in his capacity, personal capacity. And thank you very much.